Icon Podcast is hosted and sponsored by Sphere Rocket Virtual Assistants, a leading provider for your virtual assistance and outsourcing needs. Owned by one of the top-ranking EXP agents, Justin Nelson. Sphere Rocket VA provides a one-stop virtual staffing solution for business owners, and we specialize in helping business owners grow their business by leveraging through virtual assistants. Trusted by the top names in the real estate industry like Kyle Whistle, Andrew Franklin, John Kitchens, and many more. Get ready to up your success and we'll help you achieve your business goals. Book your free consultation at SpearRocketVA.com and find out how we can make your life easier. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Icon Podcast. I'm your host, Gianna, and today we have the opportunity to interview with Jeff. He's out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, so uh, not too far from where I grew up. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're excited to get to know you. So um, kind of talk to us about your story. How'd you get into real estate? You know, why did you decide to pick it up in Colorado? Did you start in Colorado? What's your story? How'd you get here? Sure. Um, well, I'm from Indiana originally, born and raised. Uh, moved to California after I graduated college. Worked in the film business out there in production for about 10 years. Uh, met my wife out there at a church I started going to. And uh, we got married. We worked full-time ministry for about seven years. And then I've got two daughters. They were four and one when we decided it was time to make a move. Just had no family out in L.A., you know. And just, I think, you know, being from a small town in Indiana, I think I knew from day one, like, of getting out there. Like, I'm not sure this is where I want to be to raise a family, you know, just being not from there or anything, whatever. But my wife's family was in Colorado. So when we decided to make the move, it was either going to be Indiana, Colorado, get the kids closer to grandparents, cousins, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we'd come here to visit a couple of times, loved it. And uh, it's been a great move. We moved here, you know, 23 years ago now. And so um, when I got here, though, my father-in-law was a real estate developer. So I started working with him. I worked with him for a couple, two, three years. And then 9-11 hit. All of his projects just froze. Uh, nothing to do. And so that's when I went and got, I went and got my license and uh, started January 2002, residential real estate. And so, uh, yeah. So, you know, been doing it 20 years. I, I worked on my own for the first three years. And then uh, my wife got licensed in 2005. I was part of a really good coaching program. And it really you know, ramped up my business. I did like 32 deals my first year. Um, which I, you know, I had no idea at the time. I'm like, well, that is so not the norm. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. the average realtor, what does six deals or something? I remember seeing that I'm like six deals a year. Like, what is that? You know? So, uh, anyway, I did 32 my first year, did about 50 my second, 72 my third by myself with no assistant. And, uh, it about killed me. I mean, it was ugly. And so anyway, my wife got her license cause she was already helping me in so many ways, everything that she could do. Um, so she got licensed 2005. And then uh, we just took off from there, you know, built a team. We were at Keller Williams for about five years. We built a team over there, did very well there, uh, you know, went independent. Well, branched off back to an independent company in 2010. Um, just no, no issues with Keller Williams. Great company. I just had no, I wasn't using anything that they offered. I had all my own websites, tools, systems, everything. And I'm paying a lot of money to be there. And so um, just decided, you know, there's got to be a better way to do it. So ended up making a move to uh, basically 100% company. Um, figured out I'd write out my career there. My team went with me and I was there for seven years. Uh, and then a friend of mine in Dallas reached out to me four years ago, asked me to take a look at EXP, which I told him, you know, Sean, I'll definitely take a look at it. I think it's good to know what's out there, but I'm definitely not moving. You know, been there, done that, the big companies, you know, whatever, but sure, send me what you got and I'll take a look at it. And uh, a week later, we made a move, which <laughs> wasn't the plan, but it just, it made too much sense to me when I saw it. You know, I'd never seen a model like this. So yeah, we've been here four years now. It's been awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what they say. Once you see it, you can unsee it. Exactly. It makes sense for you. And it's not the right brokerage for everyone, but when it's right, it's right. you got to make yeah. that move. And so you were introduced to it by a friend. You probably saw you know, the, the caps and the stock options and, you know, rev share, collaboration, all well, those just cool multiple things. streams of income, you know, getting paid to do what I'm going to be doing anyway, what I was right. already doing anyway, you know, for I the most that. part. I mean, you know, just I'm running my real estate business and building my business. And uh, I don't know, to get paid multiple ways for what I was going to be doing. I mean, when I really looked at it and, you know, I've had people ask me, why would you go from, you know, 21,000 a year at Keller Williams to basically a 100% company? Now, it still mm -hmm. cost me 
you know, nine, 10 grand a year to be there with all the deals we were doing. But why would you go, you know, from, you know, 21,000 to a hundred percent and then back to paying, you know, the, the splits and caps at EXP, like, why would you do that? And just cause I get it all back, you know, and mm-hmm. that's part of the whole icon plan, which I mean, when I saw that, I'm like, wait a minute, like I could actually be over a hundred percent, which I, that if you'd have told me that, you know, again, four years ago, well, that's impossible. You right. Know, and, and it's, I've learned that it's not impossible, you know, being here for sure. So. And you're like, this makes sense. I'm here. Stock options make sense. You know, getting the opportunity to earn your cap back. You don't get that at any other brokerage. It's not really heard of. Uh, you know, some people are kind of trying to make it happen, but not in the same way that EXP can yeah. double, triple that value. It's incredible. And Jeff, now that you're over here, you know, certain things drew you to it. But what did you fall in love with when you like finally set root in EXP? I mean, I think one of the first things that I was really surprised by was just the collaboration that goes on here. I mean, being a being a virtual brokerage, I mean, not that I'd, I'd worked from home really since 2009. I just, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in the middle of the recession when everything turned, I mean, we were cutting back expenses, different things. And I, I did walk out. I walked away from my office to get rid of that office bill. And um, so I've been virtual, you know, been working from home for a long time. That part didn't bother me, but I just, you know, I never imagined that. I honestly have more relationships, more friendships with agents now than I've had my entire 20 years, Mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of collaboration, the way it works here, I just couldn't imagine it being that way. When I, you know, when I was at Keller Williams, again, I I was the, I was the number one, I had the number one team in town for Keller Williams for several years. And, um, you know, I trained with them several times. I love doing that, love sharing stuff with people, whatever, but there's a limit as to how much you're going to give away. You know, yeah. I'm part of a coaching program at that point. I'm paying 20 grand a year to be a part of that. I'm not going to come in here and just give everything away that I'm doing. I mean, I'm paying 20 grand a year for that, right. you know, and I am training my competition. That's just the truth of it. Whereas here, because of that ownership that we get with the stock, you know, it's like there's just a different mentality here that I've seen. Like people are sharing everything because the better we all do, the more closings there are, the better our brand does, the more agents that want to join us, the better our stock does as a result. It's like, it's a win. So mm-hmm. people are sharing at a level here that I've not, I've never seen before. At, ever. Right. It's kind of yeah. unheard of in the industry. You know, everybody wants to uh, keep their secrets to their chest, but at EXP, yeah. you know, a rising tide raise all, all ships. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, and, and then with that, that kind of collaboration going on, when I joined that coaching program, I was part of Craig Proctor's program for about you know okay. nine years. A great program. I go to one of his seminars and, you know, a couple thousand agents there in Phoenix, you know, for this weekend that I'm there. And some of the best agents literally in the business, these guys mm-hmm. doing a million dollars a year, two million a year, mega teams, mega agents. And I'm like, I got to be around these guys. You know, I learned a long time ago, you become who you hang around. So, you know, I put 14 grand on a credit card. I joined that program. I paid 20 grand every year after that for nine years to be a part of it, to be around those guys. And it worked, you know, within two and a half years here, after I got my license, I was in the top 20 in town out of, you know, 4,000 agents. So, and it was all because I was just around the right people and learning from the best in the business. And so, you know, I come here to EXP when, when my friend Sean showed me this, I'm doing my due diligence on, I'm like, wait a minute, all those guys I was around for nine years in that program, they're all here now. I mean, look, like probably 95% of them are part of this company, you know, but I'm not having to pay 20 grand a year to be up around them. You know, right. it's like, we're right. all there and I see them at the conferences. We're all in workplace. We're doing Zooms together. We're collaborating now in a whole different way. And, you know, I'm still part of those guys. I mean, so it's yeah, that proximity is power. You learn, you learn from just being in the same room with them, how they carry themselves, you know, uh, how to deal with business, developing those mentorships that maybe you would have never had an opportunity for without paying for coaching long ago, which is super exciting. Yeah, for sure. So, and Jeff, you know, you're, you're busy. You're a dad, a husband, a, you know, real estate agent, all this stuff going on. How do you take care of yourself? Because real estate can feel like it's a 24 seven job. So, you know, how do you slow down? How do you chase a little bit of a work life balance and recharge? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I definitely take, you know, one, one day off a week for sure. I mean, just off, off, you know, right. um, it, it's u- usually Sundays for me, uh, whatever. And, and honestly, even, you know, with this right here, there's a lot of Saturdays when I take off too. I mean, we're very busy, you know, with showing homes and stuff. Now again, my wife and I work together. So that, you know, that helps. We figured out that balance a little bit. One thing we had to learn early on, I will tell you when, when we both started working together was 
kind of figured that out. We, you know, we try to have a date night every week and, you know, we, we go out and we'd find ourselves, you know, it's a Friday night. We're at a nice restaurant. We're having dinner. And next thing you know, we're talking about, you know, that inspection that happened and this closing that's going on on Monday and all that. We're like, okay, wait, time out, time out. You know, like, this is not, this is like a business lunch. Like, no, yeah. we got to stop. We're out on a date. This is our marriage. You know, <laughs> so we had to figure that out, you know, get some balance with draw that. some but lines, set some boundaries. Some line, sure. Sure. I do. I mean, we, we love to travel. I mean, we, you know, we, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to get back to that a little bit. I'm really looking forward to more of that. You know, we, we did it a lot for a long time and, um, you know, then COVID hit of course and everything just got shut down. So we're kind of getting back on our feet with some of that here. We've been looking at some different trips here lately. Um, you know, just getting again, that time away, you know, you got to get that recharge. You know, cause I definitely, I will tell you, I mean, early on, one of the things in you know, if there's any newer agents listening to this or watching this, whatever, I mean, I made that mistake early on, just, you know, burning the candle at both ends at the expense of, you know, my marriage and, and my family and whatever we got through it. But man, there were some hard times there because, you know, I was just, I was working 2008. That was just a brutal time. You know, we had to adjust. Yeah. You know, you, you adjust or you get, or you leave the business. And we saw that happen. Thousands of agents having to leave. So the good agents learn to adjust. We're, we're going through that right now a little bit, starting to. And, um, you know, but, but part of that too was just like, again, figuring out some of that balance in terms of how we're going to run this because it can run your life. You know, I tell people all the time, run your business, treat it like a business. I think, you know, sometimes we, we don't do that. We fail to do that. We let the business run us. And that can get, that leads to burnout. That's what that does. You know, and I've been there. So, you know, you learn from those mistakes and you figure them out or you, you know, a lot of times I think people end up getting out of the business. Right. They're bitter and they're angry and frustrated and whatever. And it's just because they didn't learn how to do that. So, yeah. yeah you got to take it's that not time for everyone. Time. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's uh, sometimes real estate can be a bloodbath and you've given some prime examples of that, Jeff. And, you know, you're still killing it. You're, you got high production. Icon agents are the best of the best. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, let's focus on your market, but we can keep it simple. Um, about how many houses do you have to sell in the Southern Colorado area to hit icon status? So for us right here, I mean, you know, what we, we cap with EXP, really our prices right now, really about five deals, you know, okay. five to six, what we'll cap an agent. And so, you know, to icon cap plus 20 deals, typically a couple variations in there, but usually about 20 deals. So for us right here, 25, 26 deals, you hit the icon. Status. Yeah. So, you know, we did 42 deals last year. Uh, we're on track to pass that this year. So, um, you know, very, very busy for sure. So Absolutely. That's awesome. And then, you know, with, with the production comes more than that to being an icon agent, you have your cultural commitment as well. So, you know, you could be a mentor, a coach, teach an EXP world, vet other icons. So Jeff, what route do you take? We do. I mean, you know, my wife is certified as a mentor. Um, we've done a little bit of that. You know, I'm, I'm more into the, the, the training, the teaching, sure. some of that kind of stuff, all the things I've learned over the years. You know, I love doing that. We, we actually like our, our, our group that we have with the XP, we do a, a training every Tuesday just for our group, um, which again, we, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm part of a group. It's about 3000 people, you know, 47 States, I think seven countries right now, you know, whatever. So we do a zoom, like kind of a mastermind training every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So we do do that. There's been a couple of things too, um, you know, even in EXP world doing some training as well. So yeah, love doing all that. Love sharing. You know, yeah. Kind of it's what makes EXP so special, you know, that not every, um, organization has that and mm -hmm. it really sets us apart. And, you know, Jeff, as far as the icon award goes, you get a lot of benefits from it. You know, a big shiny glass trophy. You have the <laughs> opportunity to earn your cap back in stock, the opportunity to be paid to go to EXP con and shareholders. So out of all these benefits, you know, what do you enjoy the most? What makes you say, man, I've got to keep iconing. Well, I mean, the, to get that stock back, you know, I'm, I, I tell people all the time, I'd much rather get my cap back in stock than just yeah. a check back for what I put into to EXP because that that stock, I mean, again, it's down right now. All the stocks are down right now, real right. estate stock in general. I love that it's down. The lower, the better. I got a good friend of mine, Jason Arons, uh, you know, he just moved over here to EXP. He, he, had a, he was a broker owner here, had about, you know, nine, 10 agents, small brokerage, but he moved here 
you know, five, six months ago, he just icon, he was doing backflips. The fact that the stock is down, yeah. you know, it's just, it's more stock. Obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm telling people all the time right now, like buy, this is when you buy, yeah. you know? And so to get that back, like if I go back, I mean, if I look at some of our stock that we got the first couple of years, we're here, we're here, you know, we get $16,000 worth of stock back. There's our cap that stock today, you know, just even those two years that that stock is well worth over a hundred thousand dollars now because right. of the way the stock is done, you know? So, you know, the value in that is is just huge. And I tell people all the time, like, look, it's it's stock. It could do anything. I'm not putting all my eggs in that basket, but is it a nice bonus to get back? Heck yeah, you know? And we're so far over 100% because of that. You know, they're, it's like we're getting paid to be here at EXP, and I'd never seen that before, ever. It just, ha as far as I know, it just hasn't existed. You could be a broker owner, you know, but then you got all the liability and everything that goes along with that, which right. I just never wanted, you know? Um and then, you know, it can be like adult daycare sometimes. Let's, let's face it. <laughs> just, I just yeah. never wanted, I never wanted that responsibility and all that stuff. I had my I risk without a whole lot of reward. Right. Yeah. 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 So, but at EXP, you know, little to no risk with a lot of reward. If you want to set your goals in production that high, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah You're not going to sure. find that opportunity really in any other scenario. And that's uh, again, why EXP is just such a flagship and growing so fast in this industry. Yeah, for sure. I well, I just it. think too, I think it's, you know, to have multiple streams, you know, of income, to have a backup plan. Cause, and I tell people all the time, I mean, just to share this, uh, seven years ago, um, I got, I go in for an annual checkup and whatever. There were a couple of numbers they'd been watching. So, um, you know, I go in that year and, okay, this number doesn't look right. Let's send you to a specialist. I come out of there basically and got diagnosed with prostate cancer. Oh, now, wow. we caught it early. You know, grateful for that. Knock on wood, um, yeah. you know, clean bill of health ever since, which has been good. We got through all that. But I will tell you for about, you know, six months, you know, my wife and I, we, we had no closings on purpose, mm. you know, because we didn't have to. We had we had we had income coming in from another business that we have. We had, you know, rental properties, different things like just had, you know, now it's going to be a little tighter, but we weren't stressing over the finances. And it makes me passionate to show this to people to other realtors because most realtors out there, they're three or four months away from being out of business. Right. That's just the truth of it. You know, the, the, the retirement plan for most realtors, you know, buy as many rental properties as you can and hope that works out. That's all fine and good. I've had them. I'll have more, whatever, diversify for sure. But you need those multiple streams, you know, because life happens. And I try and tell people all the time, like, I don't know what it's going to be. Hopefully not health issues, but for some people it will be health issues. But that's just the truth of it. You know, it could be a family thing going on and family issues. It could be, you know, what, this economy. There's so many things that are out of our control, you know, but I know I can control, you know, my finances. I can control the money coming in. Real estate, it's a numbers game. The more people I talk to, you know, the more buyers and sellers I'm going to find. But then to put it into this model where I'm going to get paid more for what I'm going to be doing anyway. And with multiple streams of income, to me, you're setting yourself up for those times when life happens because it will happen. Yeah. You know, whatever. And, and it's just, most people were not ready for it. Most people aren't ready for what's coming with this economy. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't think it's 2008. It's mm -hmm. not going to be that. It's a whole different animal, you know, yeah. but we're heading into something. You know, I just saw yesterday what, you know, mortgage, mortgage applications at a 22 year low buyers are starting to pull back. They're starting to see the market go down. So like, well, wait, let's, let's hang tight. We don't have to move right now. If, if prices are going to start dropping, let's wait, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And then mortgage interest rates being what they are, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of unknowns there with this, you know? So you, we're going to see a lot of realtors, I think within the next, you know, six months, 12 months, whatever this is going to look like, we are going to see a lot of realtors leave the business. Right. You know, it's just the truth of it. Mm -hmm. The good agents adjust, but then if you can get, my thing is like work smarter, not harder, you know, whatever. And EXP allows us to do that because of the multiple ways we're getting paid for what we're going to be doing anyway. Again, I say that over and over, but now you can be prepared, you know, with something like what's coming. Right. You, know, you have some backup plans. I'd rather have a backup plan and, and not need it than need it and not have it. And unfortunately, there will be a lot of people over the next couple of years, realtors who they need it, but they don't have it and they'll be out of the business. I mean, it's just right. the truth. So yeah. absolutely. You're hundred percent right, Jeff. And, uh, it's, it's scary, but there's, you know, like you said, it's not going to be a 2008, but, um, it's going to be, I had, I had an icon agent make the comparison. It's going to separate the Eagles from the turkeys in a tornado. 
right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so who can pick back up and fly without these high winds? It's going to be very telling. Yeah, for sure. For awesome. Sure. Well, um, Jeff, you know, as somebody that likes to teach and, you know, your wife's a certified mentor. So let's put you in a scenario here where as a new real estate agent, I'm coming up to you and I haven't even written an offer letter yet. Like nothing, right? Brand sure. new out of real estate school, but registered with EXP, you know, ready to go, covered with insurance, whatever. And I'm like, hey, Jeff, I really want an icon this year. What kind of come to Jesus talk are you going to have to me? How do we set realistic goals and expectations and how do sure. we work this problem backwards? Sure. First of all, I would say, you know, you plug into as much training as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. I would not do that so much during business hours, during work hours, you know, um, I would, I would, the nice thing about this is, you know, all our training is recorded. So I'd be like, I'd be, you know, watching that from six, seven at night till, you know, 11, 12 at night, every night I, I'd be on there. I'd be on there in the morning. I'd be watching as much of that as I can, but I think, you know, be out there where the people are, you know, and you got to get out. Now you could always, one of the things I learned early on, I was, uh, when I first started the first broker I worked with his, the office we had was a house that he had bought downtown Colorado Springs. Yeah. Now there was no signage. There was nothing that was just set up as his office. And that's where we went to work every day. But I realized pretty quick, like, okay, you know, I mean, buyers and sellers are not going to come walking in here looking for a realtor. It's never going to happen. They don't even know this is an office, you know? And so, um, but I learned pretty quickly. Like, I, I got to be out where the people are. So I remember, you know, my first deal, I, I actually picked up at a Starbucks. I mean, I took my laptop and I would go to Starbucks and I would sit there every day for, I'm working on my websites. I'm returning emails. I'm making phone calls. I'm doing all my stuff, but I was out where there was, you know, 20, 30 other people in there mm -hmm. all the time throughout the day. And I would take a break every hour or so. And I would literally, I would, I have my business cards and I would literally go around table to table. Hey, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you guys. Just want to let you know, you know, I'm a realtor here in town. I'm just sitting over here. Just wanted to let you know, if you know anybody looking to buy or sell a house, you know, man, I'd love to talk to them, whatever. If I could ever help you guys, let me know. And, you know, you know, have a good day kind of thing. And it would lead, some people would be kind of like, you know, like, okay, here, thanks, you know, whatever. But some, it would lead to conversations. And next thing you know, too, I'd be sitting there and I remember this, you know, next right here at the table next to me, here's, you know, two moms with their three kids, whatever. And, you know, the one mom is like, oh my gosh, if we don't find another place bigger, you know, I'm about ready to pull my hair out. We, we got to find something. We are busting at the seams. I hear that. Mm -hmm. So I would go over to him, you know, Hey, not trying to eavesdrop. I heard you guys talking, you know, whatever. I'm a realtor here in town. If I can help you, you know, find that house that you're looking for, let me know. I'd love to, you know, whatever. And honestly, that's how I picked up my first deal. It was a military couple. They're getting transferred out of Colorado Springs to Utah and they were getting ready to get their house in the market. But, you know, as we start talking, we, they didn't have a realtor. And so the very first deal I did, it was picked up from being out there like that. There's plenty of deals to be had. There will always, regardless of what happens, with the economy, with, you know, this market, whatever, there will always be people buying and selling homes, whether it's a job transfer, a military transfer, a divorce, you know, a death in the family. And there's all kinds of just situations which will cause people to buy or sell one way or another. There might be less of them, you know, the ones that don't have to might pull back for a little bit, but there'll always be those out there. But you got to be out there where the people are right. and talk to people. Wear your name tag. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I'll wear a shirt like this. I'm, I got a hat. I've got, I got my <laughs> name tag. I mean, I'm always wearing something because I can't tell you how many times I've been standing in the grocery store in line, you know, whatever, to go check out my armload of groceries or something. And next thing you know, I'm talking to the person I'm standing in line to because they saw my name tag and they're asking me questions about the market. Yeah. You know, hey, how long you been in real estate? Oh, you know, 20 years. What do you see going on right now, man? I've been, I've been hearing all these stories, man, the prices. But we're, next thing we're having a conversation and now, you know, I'm either giving them my business card or now I've got a digital business card because now it allows me to get their phone number. Well, here, let me text you my business card. Now I can put them into my database. And there's so many ways to work that, to start dripping on people, to start mm -hmm. getting referrals from people, whatever. But lots of deals to be had, but be out where the people are. Right. And then plug into as much training as you can. Get around the right people, and you can do that virtually in so many ways. You know, with with what we have here. At and like you said, there's there's so many tools, virtual business cards. You know, social media. I've I've had some agents join me that get eighty percent of their closes 
from social media alone, which is incredible. Yeah. And like you said, yeah. you know, whoever you are, you could be standing next to them at the grocery store, behind them in a beer line at a hockey game, whatever it yeah. is. Um, you know, it's always, it's good to network and it's possible to achieve icon within that first year, but you have to be out there networking, listening and um, learning what people want and need. Yeah, for and sure. I love that. And um Jeff, you know, for my final question, you know, you were introduced to EXP and you're like, all right, I'll look at it, but I'm not moving. Right. And it took you a week and you were like, up, oh. <laughs> moving. Um, mm -hmm. And so you were unlike some other people who may take months, years to make that decision. And it can be scary. But the number one thing I hear on this podcast is I wish I would have done it sooner. Right. So to somebody sitting in those shoes right now listening, they see the greener grass at EXP. They're like, man, this looks too good to be true. People say it's this pyramid scheme, a cult. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Um, what would you have to say to somebody listening right now? Well, first of all, I'd say you, you don't know what you don't know. Right. Just be open-minded to just look at it. This is, this is what I tell people all the time. I'll make calls or I'll do things like just – just look. I don't expect you to move now or anytime soon. You, you, I know you love where you are. You might be loyal. You've been there for, you know, I've, I've got a guy right now. In fact, I've got a guy right now. He's, he's been at Remax for 26 years. Wow. When I called him, um, he was like, you know, well, you know, like there's no way I'm moving. I don't want to waste your time. I've been at Remax for 26 years. I'm grandfathered in. I'm 100%. I, you know, they, I've won every award they have. I'm like, you know, whatever. He's like, there's, there's absolutely no way. And I, and I said, look, I said, I get it. I, I know you're happy. I, you, you, it's a great company. You've been there forever. I don't expect you to move. You know, I, but I just want to see if you'd be open just to taking a look at it. You know, and, and again, if it intrigues you, we'll stay in touch. You never know what could happen a year from now, three years from now, something with the economy, something with your broker, something with the you know, different things that happen at Remax. There's all kinds of things that are out of our control. Right. Just look. That's all I'm asking you to do is just look. And if it intrigues you, we'll stay in touch. And if it doesn't, at least you know how it works and it's just not for you and totally good. I'm good either way. Would yeah. you be open just to getting the info? And he was like, okay, well, you're right. I guess it doesn't hurt to look. So he looked and, and what do you think he's doing right now? He's joining EXP. He's in the process. He's like, he's laughing. He's like, okay, I never thought I'd do this, but this is different than I thought. And right. that's the thing. There's a lot of misperception out there, misconception, you know, different ideas that people have about what this is. This is not just another model. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different model that's never been done before. And I just tell people, like, just look at it for yourself. Don't listen to all the hearsay and all the rumors. And right. you read this online and you saw this video on YouTube. Where, no, come look at it. And then evaluate it for yourself. If it's for you, great. If it's not for you, great. Again, it's good either way, but you don't know what you don't know. Right. You, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to your business. You owe it to your team. If you have a team, you owe it to your family to at least look at it and just evaluate it for yourself. There's a reason why, you know, the top agents across the country literally are flocking here. You know, we're grown by, you know, almost a thousand agents a week right now. Like it's never happened before. I've never, 20 years of doing this, I've never seen anything like this. You know, I was the 13th agent here in Colorado Springs to join. Wow. Um, up almost 400 now. You know, I think we were number one in the market last month in terms of volume. I mean, you know, big agents are the number one and number two agents in town are both here now. Um, I mean, it's just, and that's usually what happens over time. You know, now the other thing I would tell people real quick is, when I looked at this, I was like, okay, you know, what do I have to lose? It looks like I have a whole lot to gain. What do I have to lose? I know right. I'm not locked in here. I could always go back to where I came from. They'll take me back. I've never burned a bridge. I'm not going to do that. But I'm like, what if this does what I think it could do? You know, and I'll be honest, I've been here four years. It's done way, way, way more Better. than what I thought it could do. You know, and, and I'm more excited now than I was four years ago because I can't imagine where this is going to be four years from now. Right. I mean, and, and people are so scared, Jeff, that they're going to get their brand taken away from them. And I'm like, no, we cannot stress this enough. EXP is just a set of bones. Yeah. You know, it's a set of no. bones for you to build your brand on and no. continue no. to build your brand on. They're none of these people, none, none of these big agents, big teams, brokerages, none of them would be moving over here if they thought it was going to hurt their business, if they thought right. it was going to take them backwards. And sometimes I'm like, you know, I, I, I tell people this all the time, too. It's like, I mean, whatever, you know, well, let me, let me do my research. Okay. Well, you know, I, and I just remind them like, you know, absolutely do what you got to do, do your due diligence. I'll send you a few things to help, whatever. But, you know, and again, it's got to be for you, but the research has been done. Right. It's done, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, we, we just had a guy, you know, you know, Ibrahim Hussein, number one Keller Williams team in Canada, in the entire country. And he just moved over here a month ago. 
that wasn't a flip decision. That wasn't an overnight decision. That wasn't an emotional decision. Like he evaluated the heck out of this thing. I guarantee you, you know, all these big agents, you know, Chuck Fazio, number one independent broker in the United States. I don't know how long it took him to dig through this, but there's no way he would be. I'm like, look, if, if it's good enough for Chuck, if it's good enough for Ibrahim, if it's good enough for Jay Kinder, number two Cobalt banker agent in the world. I know. By the yeah. time you're 30, if it was good enough for them, it's good enough for me. And I know they did their due diligence. Now, again, do what you got to do. Right. Do your due diligence. But as far as the research, the skepticism, sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? All that stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. We wouldn't be here 13 years later if there was a catch. Right. We wouldn't be here 13 years later, grown by a thousand agents a week, if it wasn't for real and if it wasn't working mm -hmm. for just thousands of agents. It's working in a huge way. And I don't know how you stop it right now. So I get it. There's a lot of rumors out there and things. And, you know, I had a guy from another company that I showed this to. This has been a few months ago. And we met for coffee. He brought up me a four-page paper, <laughs> like four pages. Here's bullet points, all the reasons why not to join EXP that his broker gave to him. So I, I went through it line by line by line. And I'm not kidding you, 100%, 100% was inaccurate. Either really? lies or misinformation or just absolutely just not true, you know, line by line by line. I borrowed it. I brought it home. I put it in my computer here. So I'm like, can I have this it's just in case I ever see this again or whatever? But it was 100% not true. You know, you don't get paid revenue share until you've been at the company for one year. Not true. You know, I, I got my first revenue check two months after I got here. Yeah. You know, you, you know Glenn's going to sell the company when we hit 50,000 agents. Well, we're 82,000 and he hasn't sold it yet. And he couldn't right. sell it if he wanted to, because again, we're all owners. It's a whole different deal with, with how we are now on the NASDAQ and everything else. It's not just his company. He's the founder, right. but there's a whole different, it's just, there's so many things out there, rumors and things flying around that, and I get it. We got a target on it's, our back. It's people like scary, crazy. right? They throw rocks at things that shine, but you don't yeah. know what you don't know. You said that, Jeff. And, you know, the best way to find out is from the source, right? Talk If you're watching right now and you're a little curious or skeptical, reach out to Jeff. We live in a cyber world. You know, it's that easy to send a message on Facebook or a quick email and get connected sure. and find out more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You owe it to yourself to look. And do sure. the research, right? Yeah. But make yeah. sure your research is credible. Don't yeah. be falling for um, all the things they say that, you know, it's a pyramid scheme or whatever else it is, or a four page bullet point list. That's not even accurate. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to do your due diligence, do the research. Well, I think too, if I could add, I think, you know, don't, you know, the, all the, the dangling carrots that get put out there, you know, that we tend to jump after. I'm like, you know, it, it's very short term thinking, in my opinion. I mean, you know, I've had some agents that I've shown this to, and all of a sudden they get offered something at this other company and they bite, they take it. Right. I got to go over there because they're going to give me 100% on my commission for the first two years with my team. Or they're going to, you know, they're, they're, they're actually writing me a check for $50,000 to come over there. I mean, but like to me, it's, that's all short-term thinking right with us. like you know whatever and yeah you know, we had somebody here in town um a great agent and she was here for a while and she went back to where she came from and she left and and i called her up about a year ago and just said you know hey just hope it's going well you know the door's always open if you ever want to come back of course and whatever how's it going and again they put her on 100 for for two years with her team um they gave her part ownership in the company which is fine you know whatever but i looked up her production and I looked at the stock. If she had been here that year, this is like two years ago. If she had been here that year, her stock alone, just just her from that one year with her production, would have been over three hundred thousand dollars in one year. And I, and I told her that. I said, you know, you. I don't know if you've been watching our stock. And here was here's how. She, yeah, I know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know. You're right. I mean, whatever. It's like it's almost like that short term thinking is costing her a fortune. Right. You know, because it's just something to look at. If the value proposition at another company is we're going to put you on a special deal, shh, don't tell the other agents in the office. We'll put you on this split instead of what everybody else is on. We'll give you this instead of what everybody else has. All that right. kind of stuff. Number one, that's not a value proposition. We don't have to do that because it's too good. We've never cut a special deal for any agent coming in over here, TXP, because the value proposition is too big and too good the way it is. We don't have to do that. You know, when, when Jay comes over from Keller or Cobalt Banker, number two Cobalt Banker agent in the world, 
He's on the same split that I'm on. He's on the same split that the brand new agent is on. He's on the same cap. He's got all the same opportunities that every other agent has here. We don't write Jay a check for $500,000 to have him come over here. And that kind of stuff goes on in this business. You know, and to me, it's just, it's not a value proposition. Right. We don't have to do it because the value proposition is just too good. You know, so you hear that at other companies. I mean, you know, you'll talk to different agents at Keller Williams, Cobalt Bank. They're all on different splits, different caps, different fees. You know, it's all very hush hush, you know, because it's to me, this is not fair. You know, I mean, this is not, you know, whatever the way it's done. But uh, but we just don't have to do it here, which which I like. So. Right. And like, you know, you said these successful people are coming over here and success leaves breadcrumbs, right? It's not like they're all flooding over here and they're getting ripped off because they would leave, right? They would go back to where they came from. It just, there's, there's too much evidence. There's so much that makes sense about making this jump to EXP. Yeah. Don't be nervous. Ask your questions. You're going to get the right answers if you're talking to a credible EXP agent. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Well, Jeff, we are over 35 minutes here. I think it's been an awesome episode and you've shared a lot of, you know, intelligence about the market and networking and, you know, getting involved here at EXP. Is there anything that you want to leave the listeners with as we wrap up today? No, I mean, I think we, we hit a lot and I, I appreciate you again having me on. I just, again, if I just emphasize it, just, just look at it, you know, mm -hmm. take a look. And, and again, it's got to be right for you. Nobody's here to push on anybody, you know? But you're right. Once you see it, you can unsee it. I just think, you know, get ready for what's coming. I think this is a great way to get ready for what's coming. Right. You know, because you're going to have multiple streams of income coming in and, you know, some passive income, just different things that are there that is just going to help. You know, could help, you know, if the market does do a big shift or a big turn or, again, when life happens. Because it, it will happen in some way, shape or form. It might be this year. It might be 20 years from now. But again, I'd rather have a backup plan and not need it than need it and not have it, you know? And right. so I think no, here we absolutely. have that opportunity to get that. So, yes. Yeah. So, okay. Jeff, that's, that's incredible. It's been an awesome episode. Are you going to be at shareholders? I will. I'm, I'm leaving next Wednesday, actually, heading down there early. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. I'll be there fun. too. So, um, okay. I just sent you a friend request on Facebook. Look out for some messages for me and let's get connected. Be good. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Jeff, thank you. And we'll be seeing you soon. <laughs> Bye. Have a good day. This Icon Podcast is hosted and sponsored by Sphere Rocket Virtual Assistants, a leading provider for your virtual assistance and outsourcing needs. Owned by one of the top-ranking EXP agents, Justin Nelson. Sphere Rocket VA provides a one-stop virtual staffing solution for business owners, and we specialize in helping business owners grow their business by leveraging through virtual assistants. Trusted by the top names in the real estate industry like Kyle Whistle, Andrew Franklin, John Kitchens, and many more. Get ready to up your success and we'll help you achieve your business goals. Book your free consultation at SpearRocketVA.com and find out how we can make your life easier.